As the college basketball season inches closer and closer to March Madness, plenty of NBA prospects have been making their case to be drafted in the first round. The race for the number one pick is heating up, and no one has really solidified themselves as the best prospect. You could say there are at least three players, maybe even four players, that could legitimately hear their name called first at the 2022 NBA Draft. Players have played their way inside the top 10, and some have played their way out of it. But there's still time to raise their draft stock in conference play, the conference tournament, and ultimately the NCAA tournament. But I feel we've seen enough of these guys to properly evaluate them at this point. This is my prospect breakdown of the 2022 NBA draft class. First up, Auburn freshman forward Jabari Smith. This guy's been on the rise ever since the start of the season. He's definitely one of the few that could be the number one pick this summer. The son of a former NBA player has been able to show NBA scouts he can be an all-around player on the next level. He fits perfectly in today's NBA on offense and on defense. The silky smooth jump shooting forward stands around 6'10 with a 7'2 wingspan. Smith has poise on the court that's well beyond his years and is not afraid of the big shot or the big moment in games to swing momentum back to Auburn. His confidence and the ease in which the game comes to him makes him an intriguing pick at number one. He has solid footwork in the post, and he loves to use his right pivot foot in a turnaround fadeaway jump shot. And he's been hitting it with consistency all season. He's more perimeter oriented than anything, and he can fall in love with his jump shot a little too much. But with his ability to knock down shots with consistency with or without a hand in his face, you can understand why. Jabari is shooting around 40% from three-point range. He's athletic, has good lateral quickness for a man his size, and can put the ball on the ground to create his own offense. But as much as he can provide on offense, he has just as much potential on defense. He can guard positions one through five, and that has been one of many reasons why he's at the top of many scouts NBA draft boards. He can switch on to guards, showing his quickness to contain smaller players and the strength to hold his own against bigger players. And being able to add around 20 pounds of muscle has made a great case on why he should be the number one overall pick. My NBA draft projection for Jabari Smith is a top two draft pick. Gonzaga freshman big man Chet Holmgren. He came in with a lot of hype and was the odds on favorite to be the top pick before the season started. The emergence of other prospects in this class has forced him to continue proving that he is the number one guy. Holmgren displays glimpses of why he's been labeled a unicorn, and he has a rare blend of body type and skills, which has drawn comparisons to Kristaps Porzingis. Chet shows stretchability and has a lot of talent as a face-up scorer. He can shoot the ball from deep, has good handles and nimble feet that allows him to get to the basket with ease. He's got an easy, effortless stroke from three-point range and can also shoot off the dribble, which is really outstanding for a young seven-footer. Holmgren is also skilled on the block, showcasing nice post moves, footwork, and a soft touch around the rim with both hands. He is fluid like a wing in transition, and unlike most seven-footers, he's comfortable going coast to coast. What makes him so unique is that he can block a shot on one end, push the ball up the floor, and drain a pull-up three-pointer off the bounce in transition. Unicorn level ability. In many ways, Holmgren is a seven-foot small forward who also happens to be a great shot blocker. He is currently averaging just over three blocks per game. His skill set is also perimeter oriented and will likely be even more so once he gets to the NBA. He weighs in at less than 200 pounds despite a seven foot frame. There's obvious concerns about his long-term durability. And Porzingis is a great example. KP has continuously struggled to stay healthy throughout his NBA career. There is always a gamble drafting most prospect high in the draft, and Holmgren is no different. But its ability to space the floor, create, and defend the rim at an elite level may be too much for a team to pass on. My NBA draft range for Chet Holmgren is a top three draft pick. Produced sophomore guard Jaden Ivey. It's hard to argue against this guy being the most exciting player in college basketball, but also with that, He's one of the best players in college basketball. Ivy has elite speed and burst to get by any defender and has the athleticism to play above the rim. There's a reason why a lot of fans of NBA scouts compare him to Ja Morant. 
There probably isn't a more perfect NBA comparison to a prospect in this year's draft class. Ivy comes from a strong athletic bloodline. Both of his parents played professionally. His father played in the NFL for five seasons, and his mom played in the WNBA for five seasons. Ivy is coming off a very good freshman season where he made the all Big Ten freshman team. But it was clear that he didn't have confidence in his outside shot. He only shot 26% from three last season. But this year, he's shooting career highs across the board. And that skill could make him a dark horse candidate to be drafted first overall. He started the season high from three-point range, shooting around 40%. But his jump shot has cooled down recently, and as of right now, he's shooting around 36%. But he's still finding ways to impact the game offensively. He ranks in the 91st percentile in isolation plays, scoring 1.1 points per possession. Ivy is a phenomenal athlete and has flash elite potential on the defensive end of the floor. When Ivy is fully locked in, he's everything you want from a perimeter defender. Athletic, smart, tough, pesky, and relentless. His offense has taken a huge leap as he has shown the ability to create space for himself and score on multiple levels. Now he's more of a scorer than a passer at this point, but he's shown to be a willing passer and has improved as a facilitator, despite his low assist average. With the effect and impact that John Moran is having, why would any team pass up on Jay Knight? He will be my number one pick, but I don't believe he will be picked first. The combo goal had a strong showing in the NCAA tournament last year. Look for him to turn on another gear as Purdue prepares for a big run this season and maybe a strong performance this season, will convince a team that he's the best prospect in the draft. Nobody wants to make the mistake of choosing a big man over an elite guard prospect like in 2019 when the Pelicans chose Zion over John ja Morant. My NBA draft range for Jaden Ivey is a top three draft pick. Duke freshman forward Paolo Banchero. Paolo is a tough physical combo forward that has the ability to score in a lot of different ways. Physically and mentally, he's ready to compete in the NBA right away. He has great mobility and is very well coordinated, has a lot of natural strength and a low center of gravity. Banchero knows how to use his physical advantage too. He excels at playing bully ball and powers his way towards the rim, playing through defenders and finishing through contact, has solid handles for a man his size and has a nice mid-range game and smooth release. Banchero is at his best when he puts his head down and goes straight to the basket. Not only has he been able to score in the paint and from the mid-range area, but he's also a good rebounder and an improving playmaker. He averaged around four assists in the month of January and nearly had a triple-double in the OT loss against Florida State. He's big enough that he can see over the defense and he makes the right passes when he's double-teamed. But he can be a little too unselfish at times and not be aggressively looking for a shot when the team needs him to. He also needs to improve his three-point shooting. He's only shooting 31% from three. That obviously needs to improve to keep the defense honest and to truly become a three-level scorer. Now, I do believe he has a good all-around game, specifically on offense, but I also don't believe he has the same high ceiling as the other players at the top of the draft, like Jabari Smith, Chet Holmgren, and Jay Knight. I look at Paolo as a John Collins type of player, someone who can play off another star, but not really be relied on to carry a team offensively like that. More than likely, he won't be as successful playing bully ball in the NBA, and his handles is not quite good enough to create opportunities on the perimeter. Banchero is not what you would call a defensive player either. He often seems to coast on that end of the floor, even if he never becomes a stopper. He is big and quick enough for his size that he should be able to be solid on that end. Somebody who won't hurt you necessarily, but won't be an anchor on the defense. My NBA draft range for Paolo Banchero is a top five draft pick. Wisconsin sophomore guard Johnny Davis. This guy may be the National Player of the Year front runner right now, and no other player has climbed the draft boards faster than Johnny Davis. He has impressed scouts with how consistently he has played at a high level every single night. Davis can get buckets in his sleep, and he ain't afraid to let you know about it either. He is a fiery competitor and shows a lot of emotion when he's out there on the court. There isn't many players in this class more dangerous coming off ball screens than Johnny Davis. 
He sets up screens incredibly well. He has a crafty handle and an underrated burst, but he doesn't always need a screen to score. Davis has the ability to create his own shot. He has a nice first step and is a great finisher around the basket. If you can stop him from penetrating, he can hit you with his patented step back fadeaway jump. Davis is one of the best tough shot makers in college basketball, and he shows up in big games. The best guard matchup of the season took place on January 3rd, when Davis went head to head with fellow NBA prospect Jay Knight. Davis put together one of the most impressive performances in college basketball this season with 37 points, 14 rebounds, 3 assists, and 3 steals. Davis has scored 30 or more points 3 times and 25 or more 8 times. Davis is the only Big Ten player and one of four major conference players to lead his team in points, rebounds, and assists. He's also a solid passer and he's been an exceptional defensive player this season. Davis is an active on the ball and off the ball defender. He's an absolutely disruptive force in passing lanes, and his 2.3 percentage steal rate probably even undersells how skillful he is forcing turnovers. His anticipation is incredible, and he always seemed to know when to pounce. Davis is the real deal. There's not that many prospects I would take over Johnny Davis in this class. He has good size for a two guard, he's a legit three level scorer, can play good defense, and plays with an edge that anybody can get behind. My NBA draft projection for Johnny Davis is a top five draft pick. Duke freshman guard AJ Griffin. This guy was a five star recruit and had a history of injuries in the last couple of years. And add to the fact that Griffin had a knee sprain before the season, it should have been expected for him to have a slow start to the season. And that's just what happened. Griffin got limited playing time at the start of the season as Coach K eased him into the rotation as the season went along. Once he started getting consistent minutes is when you started to understand why he was so highly touted coming out of high school. On January 12th is when Coach K decided to put him in the starting lineup, and it's been uphill ever since for Griffin. I personally believe Griffin has just as high of a ceiling as his teammate Paolo Branchero, and he could even have a higher ceiling. After joining the starting lineup on January 12th, the 18-year-old wing has proven to be one of the most efficient scorers in the nation. He's shooting extremely well off catch and shoot jumpers, dribble jumpers, and when using off-ball screens. Griffin is built like a tank. His physique and physical playing style reminds me of a player like Jimmy Butler. Not saying he's going to be him, but his size, strength, and physicality reminds me of him. Besides being one of the best shooters from three, Griffin also loves to drive to the basket and seek contact in the paint. He's more of a straight line driver for the most point right now, but I believe he can improve his ball handling and become a legit all-around scorer. He's only scratching the surface of his potential. He also has good defensive instincts on the ball and off the ball. He has the lateral quickness, wingspan, and strength to guard at least three positions, and he's still only 18 years old. My NBA draft range for A.J. Griffin is from 6 to 8. Arizona sophomore guard Benedict Matherin. He could have easily entered the draft last year and got selected in the back of the first round, but Matherin has made his return to his sophomore season count. He has been sensational this season and looks like a lot to be drafted in the lottery. The Canadian is one of the best athletes in college basketball with a pure shooting stroke. The 6'6 guard has become more assertive this season after opting to return, leading Arizona at around 19 points and grabbing 6.5 rebounds per game. He's risen to the occasion in the biggest games of the season, scoring 25 against Wichita State, 30 against Illinois, and 28 against Tennessee. Going into his sophomore season, we knew that Matherin had both the size and spot of ability to be a good guard at the next level. He has continued his excellent shooting this season, Though he isn't as efficient from three compared to his freshman year, he's still shooting 38%. The 19-year-old has a nice high release on his jump shot, and he gets good lift on it as well. It's a picture-perfect stroke, and it's nearly impossible for defenders to get their hands on it. But he has expanded his game more on the offensive end. The biggest improvement in the sophomore's game is his ability to attack defenses off the bounce. He's more of a threat on the ball and off the ball. I wouldn't necessarily say he's an elite shot creator, 
but he has taken a step forward on possibly becoming a complete scorer for the next level. Matherin has become a lot more comfortable attacking closeouts this season. Considering how good of a shooter he is, Matherin is always going to have defenders on their heels. Also with his size, length, and athleticism, he projects as an above average defender in the NBA. And he has gotten better on that end compared to his freshman season. My NBA draft range for Benedict Matherin is from 6 to 10. Iowa sophomore forward Keegan Murray. Iowa lost a lot of production from last year's team with the departures of players like Luca Garza and Joe Wieskamp. But Keegan Murray has been able to step right on in and play out of his mind. The production from Murray during his second season at Iowa is certainly surprising. As a freshman, he only averaged around 7 points and 5 rebounds. Murray is a long 3 and D wing player who is leading the Big Ten in scoring and shooting 37% from 3 point range. Murray does an extremely good job recognizing mismatch opportunities and ranks in the 98th percentile in post-ups, averaging 1.3 points per possession. He's remained consistent all season and can be a plug and play guy right away at the NBA level. Murray doesn't always have to have the ball in his hands to be effective. He's a great rebounder and a good cutter. He's not going to blow you away with elite speed, quickness, or athleticism. Even though he's the nation's leading scorer, it's hard to imagine Murray becoming a 20-point scorer on the next level. His handles aren't good enough at this point to play small forward, and he will be undersized at power forward. His off-the-ball offense, outside shooting, and rebounding will be the skills that will most likely translate in the NBA. He's also a good transition scorer and plays with a consistent high motor. Murray is a very versatile defender who shows a lot of good instincts and awareness on that end of the floor. He plays with great positioning and fundamentals and has enough mobility to step out and guard in space. And he also can protect the rim as he's averaged 2.1 blocks per game. He's pretty old for a sophomore. He will be turning 22 in August. Keegan Murray has everything you need to be a quality starter in the NBA. And if an NBA team can get that outside the top five, he will be considered a great pick. My NBA draft range for Keegan Murray is from 6 to 10. Memphis freshman center Jalen Duran. Before the start of the season, Duran was looked at as a possible top 5 pick because of his combination of athleticism, size, and length. You could easily envision him being a top-notch rim protector with potential to add to his game. He hasn't quite lived up to the preseason hype, but this guy is still a prospect to look out for going forward with all his physical tools. There are flashes and moments where Duran looks like one of the most dominant prospects in this class. His physical gifts and young age are huge selling points as a prospect. He will most likely be one of the youngest prospects who will declare for the draft. Duran is 18 months younger than Holmgren and should technically be a high school senior this year. He's a tad bit short for a center at 16, but his strong frame and long wingspan at 7'5 should make up for it. He plays with impressive power on both ends of the court, despite being so young, showing the ability to get vertical and absorb contact at the rim defensively. His steady adjustment to the college game has been very encouraging. Most NBA scouts already knew he was going to be very raw offensively, and at this point, anything Durant can give you offensively, other than being a lob threat and rim running, is a bonus. He has only attempted one three-pointer during the whole season. An underrated part of his game is his passing. He's made some good and solid reads this season, finding the open man out of double teams. Durant has scored double digits in the last six games in just under 25 minutes per game. And he's had three games in which he recorded at least five blocks. My NBA draft range for Jalen Duran is from six to 10. Kentucky freshman guard Shaden Sharp. It's always interesting when you add a little mystery to the NBA draft, and that's what Shaden Sharp could possibly bring in this year's draft. Without playing a single minute, there will still be plenty of NBA interest this June in the 6'6", 18-year-old who has dynamic shot-making ability and explosive bounce. Sharp continues to be the topic of national discussion even though he hasn't played this season. Head coach John Calipari has doubled down and said Sharp is planning on playing at Kentucky next season and even projecting him as the number one draft pick in the 2023 NBA draft. 
Sharp may genuinely plan on coming back to Kentucky next season, but it may be too difficult to ignore NBA executives once they start trying to convince him to declare and stay in the draft. His upside is undeniable. He has a natural feel for the game. He's extremely athletic and is a young player who should adjust well to the pace and spacing of the NBA game. There is always concern with NBA prospects that don't play against legit competition in college or overseas before being drafted. How will he play within a structured offense? Can he take tough coaching? How much does he love the game of basketball? How committed is he to get better? You really can't tell that in high school because it's just too easy for NBA talent. But Shaden Sharp certainly looks the part. If he had started the season at Kentucky, it's possible he could be in the running for the number one overall pick in this year's draft. He has a perfect blend of size, athleticism, and elite scoring instincts. My NBA draft range for Shaden Sharp is from 6 to 12. Kentucky freshman guard Ty Ty Washington. Washington has blossomed into a complete point guard over the course of this season. Because of his good outside shooting, John Calipari has him playing more at the two-guard position while playing with fellow point guard Shabir Wheeler. Washington is in the same situation Jamal Murray was at Kentucky, playing off the ball a lot with Tyler Eulis. Washington proved early on that he's a good outside shooter and is also a lethal pull-up threat and being able to shoot off the bounce is one of the most valuable skills a guard can have in the NBA. The 6'3 point guard has enough speed and quickness to get to the basket when he needs to and finish at the rim. He's not a top-notch athlete, he's more of an under-the-rim type of player. Throughout his Kentucky tenure, head coach John Calipari has often had to play guys out of position or maybe not play a player as many minutes as they deserve. With that, some NBA prospects who have played at Kentucky have had to make sacrifices in order to fit in and keep the end goal in mind. A player like Devin Booker had to come off the bench for a loaded 2015 team. Now he's one of the best scorers in the NBA. Washington is next in line in that long list of players and that is not necessarily a bad thing. He's becoming a team player on a team with a lot of upperclassmen with aspirations of winning a national championship. Earlier this season, Washington had his best scoring display of the season when he had a career-high 28 points on 13 shots and added 5 assists. In a game with Shavir Wheeler out against Georgia, Washington showed what kind of floor general he could be playing point guard full-time. He had 17 points and 17 assists, breaking the Wildcats' assist record with 16 held by John Wall. The Wildcats could make a deep run in the NCAA tournament, and if Washington is healthy, he could rise up in the rankings and be a top 10 pick. My NBA draft range for Ty Ty Washington is from 8 to 14. Kansas senior guard Ochai Abaji. This season he has emerged as one of the best players in college basketball and is definitely in the running for national player of the year. Abaji is ready right now to step into the NBA as a 3 and D option. He's made major strides as a shooter in his four seasons at KU. And going into his senior season, he was a borderline first-round prospect. But throughout this season, he has solidified himself as a surefire first-rounder with a chance at being in the lottery. Senior draft picks like Desmond Bain and Chris Dorte should give teams more confidence in drafting players who are around 22 years old. Every now and then, you'll find an upperclassman that is not only productive, but also still has a lot of upside. Obaji's ball handling has improved and he has gotten more comfortable attacking off the dribble, pairing well with a strong frame and a steady body control when he gets to the basket. He's always been an impressive athlete, but now he's hitting 44% of his threes at a high volume of attempts. He fits the mold of an off-ball guard who spaces the floor and attack closeouts in the NBA. Simply put, what he's doing this season is just too good to ignore. Abaji is leading the Big 12 in scoring, and is averaging around 20 points per game, along with five rebounds. His newfound offensive confidence has played a big factor in his improvement. Abaji is an experienced college player who could get overlooked because of his age, even though he's definitely worthy of being a lottery pick. My NBA draft range for Ocha Abaji is from 10 to 18. Baylor freshman four, Kendall Brown. Brown is a great athlete 
who is most effective in the open floor and when cutting to the basket. He makes plenty of winning plays that many NBA teams are looking for. Brown is a 6'8 forward with a 6'10 wingspan. He's one of the most explosive leapers in the class and has been tremendous in finding ways to score efficiently. Brown has a strong feel for how to score without dominating the ball, which is covered up by the fact that he doesn't really have a reliable jump shot just yet and he is not naturally a creative offensive player. Giving him the ball and expecting him to get buckets is just not what he's capable of doing, at least not at this point. His terrific fluidity, footwork, and quickness, as well as elite athleticism, not only helps him on offense, but also on defense. He can be an elite defensive player in the future. Brown is very aggressive on that end of the floor. He can comfortably defend one through four, with the agility to keep up with guards on the perimeter and the length and athleticism to bother forwards inside. Brown is shooting 59% from the field this season, but that number is misleading. Most of his buckets have come at the rim. He is still developing an outside shot. Brown is shooting just 30% from beyond the arc and will need to be able to hit that consistently to be more than just an athletic wing in the NBA. My NBA draft range for Kendall Brown is from 12 to 20. Milwaukee freshman forward Patrick Baldwin Jr. The idea of an elite recruit going to a small school for whatever reason can be an amazing story. But it also has the potential to be a disaster for their draft stop. And that's certainly the case with Patrick Baldwin Jr. Saying his decision to play for his father at Milwaukee hasn't worked out will be an understatement. The appeal of Baldwin is his size and elite shooting stroke. A 6'10 forward with a clean shot release and deep range. Over the years, there's enough evidence suggesting that Baldwin is a far better shooter than what he's shown this season. He's in the midst of one of the most disappointing freshman seasons among prospects who projects as a first rounder. Baldwin is just hitting 34% from the field and 27% from three. And more importantly, hasn't elevated his team like a top five recruit is expected to. His physicality, toughness, and defensive metal has frequently come into question, and Baldwin hasn't really done much to alleviate those concerns. He also has questions tied to his inefficiency, lack of explosion, and a jump shot heavy shot selection. He's dealt with multiple injuries during his freshman season, and he's only appeared in 11 out of 29 games for the Milwaukee Panthers. It's a great chance we won't be seeing him in uniform again in college. Despite the disappointing season and lack of production from Baldwin, some teams could ignore his freshman stats and bank on his long-term potential. Remember last year when the Memphis Grizzlies took Zaire Williams at 10th overall? Just like with Baldwin, Williams had an inefficient freshman campaign after being highly touted coming out of high school. Baldwin has pedigree, he brings size and above average ball skills and projects as a good three-point shooter with a good feel for the game. That should be enough to keep his draft stock afloat in the first round and possibly in the latter. My NBA draft range for Patrick Baldwin Jr. is from 12 to 20. LSU sophomore forward Tari Eason. The Cincinnati transfer has made an immediate impact in Baton Rouge leading the Tigers in scoring, blocks, field goal percentage, and offensive rebounds. The 6-8 combo forward can do a little bit of everything on the court and can impact both ends of the floor. Easton is an explosive leaper who has an aggressive style of play. He's a good ball handler for his size and is incredibly agile. He can rebound the ball well and can push it in transition for easy buckets. He's a great finisher at the rim can cut into open space and position himself around the basket, especially around the dunker spot. Easton has also flashed a little passing talent from time to time, reading the defense and being able to pass to an open man after the help comes. He's more of a forward than a three. Tari doesn't have the necessary quickness or tight handles to play small forward for a long stretch. And as a power forward, he will be undersized, so he will have to rely on his quickness athleticism, rebounding, and outside shooting on offense. He's been excellent on defense this season. He can go a one through five at the college level. He can switch on to anybody. He covers a lot of ground and has elite closing speed. He really has been putting it all together on both sides of the ball since conference play started. 
before last game at Kentucky, Easton had four straight games scoring at least 20 points. He's gaining more confidence the more he plays. My NBA draft range for Tari Easton is from 13 to 20.